It's my pleasure to be with you here today to discuss the vascular risks that are associated with cognitive impairment and dementia and share with you that what's good for the heart is good for the brain. I'm Mark Supiano. I'm a geriatrician. I direct the Division of Geriatrics at the School of Medicine at the University of Utah, where I also direct the University of Utah Center on Aging program. So I'd like to begin by sharing with you some really good news, namely that there is now a new paradigm in dementia prevention. It turns out that the majority of Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, or ADRD, have a vascular etiology. Moreover, the incidence of mild cognitive impairment, dementia, and brain white matter lesion volume is decreased among hypertensive patients who are randomized to achieve a systolic blood pressure goal of 120 compared with 140 millimeters of mercury in the systolic blood pressure intervention trial, otherwise known as SPRINT. What I'll be covering with you today is the vascular risk for dementia. I'll begin with an overview and provide some context for the mechanisms through which there is an association between vascular risks and cognitive decline and impairment. I'll then move on to discuss that vascular risk prevention is a means to reduce the risk for cognitive impairment and dementia and describe the lifespan strategies that are now evidence-based, as well as populations that should be targeted in this regard. And then I'll conclude with a discussion of how vascular risk treatment can be a means to reduce the risk for dementia. The various causes are shown in proportion to the prevalence that these conditions have been identified in populations. It used to be thought that Alzheimer's disease was the predominant cause of dementia. However, there are some mixed conditions, as shown in the blue pie chart, that there's a vascular contribution that there are mixed pictures in these other conditions that contribute to dementia. And more recently, it's been identified that in fact there are vascular contributions even to Alzheimer's disease itself. So the vascular risks for dementia are illustrated on this slide, and these mechanisms include not only high blood pressure or hypertension, but really a number of age-related mechanisms that are associated with both vascular disease and now have been linked to cognitive impairment and dementia. These age-related mechanisms include arterial stiffness, endothelial dysfunction, oxidative damage, and inflammation. Moreover, there are a number of confounding factors that also increase with prevalence in aging that account for this association. These include obesity, diabetes, smoking, and hyperlipidemia. So the vascular side of Alzheimer's disease is becoming more apparent. It's been identified from autopsy studies that 80% of Alzheimer's disease patients' brains have evidence for significant vascular pathology. Moreover, there's now evidence for impaired cerebrovascular reactivity even in preclinical Alzheimer's disease before the onset of symptoms of dementia. Namely, that vascular risk may complement imaging biomarkers in assessing the risk of prospective cognitive decline even in preclinical Alzheimer's disease. Illustrated in the figure on the left here is explanation for why there is this connection between arterial stiffness, vascular disease, and organ impairment in the brain, in the heart, and the kidney, the three organs where we have very good data to suggest that there are age-related declines. It's tied to arterial stiffness, and as illustrated in the middle of this slide, an increase in pressure waves, namely that the increased backward transmission of the larger forward wave exposes the peripheral small arteries in the organs to damaging levels of pressure pulsatility that may contribute to the emerging spectrum of microvascular diseases that are common in aging, including the brain cognitive impairment. With this understanding of the mechanisms and why aging and these vascular risks are, are linked to organ damage in the brain, I'll move on to describe now the data that support, the evidence that supports that vascular risk prevention can also prevent dementia. It turns out that hypertension is now identified as the dominant risk factor for this connection. The quote here is that chronic hypertension is the most prevalent and pernicious risk factor for cognitive impairment in aging. 
Following from this, the 2020 Lancet report to the World Health Organization suggested that an intervention targeted toward individuals would be to treat hypertension and to aim for a systolic blood pressure below 130 millimeters of mercury in midlife as an evidence-based strategy to prevent dementia later in life. So let me walk through some of the evidence that supports this. In the last 10 years or so, there have been a number of studies that have identified this connection between midlife changes in hypertension or blood pressure and later life changes in the brain. I won't list all of these titles, but just to point out that there are a number of studies now and the evidence basis for this is becoming very clear that there is a strong connection between high blood pressure in midlife and the later onset of dementia. So to move on from the prevention approach, treatment approaches have also been evidence-based now that uh, treatment of vascular risk has been shown to reduce dementia risk. The evidence basis for this is strongest now for blood pressure reduction from the SPRINT trial, and I'll describe that in a bit more detail, and then conclude with some of the populations that should be targeted from a public health perspective to maximize the benefit that we now is evident when blood pressure control is improved. So prior to the publication of results from the systolic blood pressure intervention trial, the effect of intensive blood pressure lowering on cognitive function was not known. A component of the SPRINT trial was the SPRINT memory and cognition in decreased hypertension, otherwise known as the SPRINT mind study. As a quick reminder, SPRINT was a randomized control trial that randomized people to either intensive therapy, a systolic goal of less than 120, the standard arm being a systolic goal of 140. And a number of outcomes were identified over the course of the trial, including from sprint mind, cognitive impairment and dementia, as well as brain white matter hyperintensities. The results from the sprint mind study and the sprint MRI study are highlighted in this infographic. So the main finding from the sprint mind study was that there was a significant, namely a 15% reduction in the incidence of the development of mild cognitive impairment in the participants in SPRINT who were randomized to the intensive arm or the 120 millimeter blood pressure target. In addition, a similar 15% reduction in the risk for a combination of mild cognitive impairment or probable dementia. This is the good news that I referenced in the introduction that both cognitive impairment and probable dementia can be prevented with more intensive blood pressure control. To conclude with the public health implications of these results, it's important to appreciate the context that hypertension remains a public health epidemic. Today, over 116 million adults in the United States have high blood pressure, and as shown in this graph, age is the strongest predictor for hypertension. So going across from left to right, beginning at age 20 and the final column being age 75 and greater, in both men in blue and women in gold, there's a significant increase in the prevalence of hypertension with increasing age. Namely, by the time of the age group 75 and older, 85% of individuals have a diagnosis of hypertension. Beyond this, it's also important to recognize that uncontrolled hypertension is a major public health concern. Today, only half of Americans with hypertension have a blood pressure controlled below 140 millimeters of mercury, whereas the target, the real goal is 130, but only a half of people today are achieving a target of 140. Beyond this, control rates are lowest among older adults where the prevalence is the highest, and similarly among black, indigenous, and people of color where blood pressure rates are also very high. This leads to the conclusion that there really now should be no debate about the need to improve our performance and the important role of protocol-driven care to better implement blood pressure control at the population level. So in summary, first, vascular risks, especially high blood pressure, are highly related to cognitive decline and impairment and dementia. Secondly, lower levels of vascular risk in midlife are associated with reduced risk for subsequent cognitive decline and impairment. 
Third, vascular risk treatment, most notably intensive systolic blood pressure control, is an effective strategy to reduce the risk for mild cognitive impairment. From a population health perspective, lowering cardiovascular disease risk in midlife and improved control of systolic blood pressure amongst older adults are areas of focus where we should be targeting interventions to decrease the risk for cognitive impairment and dementia. I very much appreciate this opportunity to share the good news with you that what's good for the heart is good for the brain, and I appreciate your time and attention today.